and I'm there in the situation. Things are happening too fast. Mm. And I'm just calm. And you in the back seat. I'm in the back seat. Just on can't the, even see where on the, the car is headed, bro. Sitting, I can't even see. The guy's legs are over me like this. They're busy taking my phone, getting mm. into my accounts, wiping me out. Mm. Mm. I stopped judging people who end up in situations where they can't move forward. Today, I interview the miracle perspective. If you can sell yourself, you can sell almost anything. Mm. You grew up as a pastor's son. Who is this miracle perspective? Some call him a superhero. You emceed my wedding last year. <laughs> so I'm just pretending not to know you for the sake of the starters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My starters, my starters, I have a special guest. It's been a long time coming, TMP. His first name is Miracle. So it means him coming here might just be a miracle. My brother, how are you? My brother, thank you for inviting me. You know this guy, ne? In fact, let me speak to you directly. Yeah. You are a big inspiration, even though sometimes you pretend not to know it. <laughs> so you need to be reminded from time to time. Your profile, bro, an author of the Five Rand University. But today I see myself and I consider myself as an inspirational educator, an mm -hmm. author, a professional public speaker certified by Toastmasters, yes. and <laughs> an environmental <laughs> professional uh, mm. with an honors degree, as well as an entrepreneur building a couple of businesses. Can I have a copy of that book just to show them? Because I know some of them didn't watch that book review that I did. The author of the Five Rand University. <clears throat> Don't just watch the video. Actually go out, seek where this man is and buy this book. I actually have something big coming from that book. I'll, I'll tell you when we... You'll tell me all about it. Yeah. Okay. Let me start it here, my brother. You are a confidence coach and a king, right? So I wanted to know... Given the fact that you grew up as a pastor's son, did that influence you in any way? Uh, in, 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 in me now as a confidence coach? Yes, in you being the guy that you are today, a front runner, a bench maker, someone who actually breaks boundaries and levels, levels <laughs> my brother. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, thanks, thanks, my brother. You, you really. You put flowers in my shoulders. I can't even talk anymore because you're just pumping me up. But yeah. Yes, it did. A big time. A, 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 a great deal. Because for the longest time, I didn't have the confidence I have right now. Mm, mm. But I look like I have confidence. Yeah, yeah. Always. Always. I always, always look like I had the confidence. But I didn't have. And that's the difference between showing the confidence and actually being confident. Mm, mm, so mm. I realized that most of the time, I was more displaying the insecure confidence mm. and the inse insecure confidence is the concept that I, I i came up with to say you may look confident more especially around your circle mm. i grew up in the church space it was easy for me to stand up in front of people make announcements mm. call the offerings mm. i was used to the space i was used to the people so to people around me i showed like i have confidence mm, mm, mm. but did i have the same thing when i went into new spaces mm. no i didn't and so what I, was happening inside the thing is or oh, in your mind the pastor's kid, yeah I had a lot of pressures mm. and it it raised the judgment antennas very high okay so i was very conscious of what people say about me mm. because you're a pastor's kid you're not meant to be seen in places that Christians shouldn't be. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Not, not meant to be seen with girls. Yeah. Even though I'm a boy, I'm a bubbly, <laughs> handsome boy. Man, girls are <laughs> so, so, I mean, I, I must mingle sometimes. Yeah, 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 for so, sure. But you can't be seen doing those things. So, what do you do? You end up doing it in behind closed doors. Yeah, yeah. When you go to these places that you're not supposed to go to, you're always showing a different face. Mm. That, in its own way, kills your self-confidence because mm. you lose your identity mm. you are living multiple identities mm. because in 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 one aspect or one area of your life you are this person that everybody looks up to everybody sees this pastor's kid a holy kid yeah and i've been always conscious of how my father's reputation 
is kept. Mm. And mm. I didn't want to disappoint him mm. in any way. Mm. So I was conscious of that. And I'm the only son amongst four ladies. Yo. I'm, I'm just here. <laughs> Yo, and you're the thorn amongst the, rays, the roses. Yeah. So the pressure was too much because you are the next bishop in the, in the church uh. from a very young age. Uh. So I'm going around holding this bishop title mm. while I'm still a kid mm. and I can't be myself. Mm. So I'm living double lives. At school, I became a clown. Mm. I was a naughty kid. I mm. was the the ever loud boy who wants attention. Who's just so you weren't getting enough enough attention because, no, as you I were was, saying, you were yeah. I was getting attention, but mm. it was a, an attention that imposed a certain identity I didn't want for myself. Okay. I hated being a fastest kid. Okay. So that you loved being a clown. I loved being. A, a person, a, an, an a attention boy, grabber, a yeah, boy yeah, yeah. There. So I became a popular guy from mm. a very young age. Mm. I was a popular guy because I was funny, always the funny guy cracking jokes. But that was me actually using it as a coping mechanism. Yeah. Okay. Let me rather be a clown. At least you won't associate it with being a pastor. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. I'm never serious about anything. Yeah. I'm yeah. playful. Yeah. So people won't take me seriously. It's okay yeah. if they don't take me seriously. Yeah. Because if they take me seriously, then. It's easy to call me up on stage to preach. Yeah. I don't want to do that. Yeah. I want to be a boy. It's like I wanted to live that life of uh, 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 Saul before he was Paul. Mm. He mm. was killing people, Christians. He hated God. Mm. I wanted that conversion as well, that dramatic conversion mm. where he's mm. on the horse and lightning strike him. <laughs> then he's like, yes, Lord, talk to me. <laughs> I wanted that thing to a point where now it's crazy. I don't even know the date I was born again. As a Christian, mm. I can't pinpoint that. I was born into it. Oh yeah, yeah. Unlike unlike people I, that come to the congregation exactly, seeking. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted that thing as well, mm. and I never had that. And with the pressure I was getting, I couldn't have that thing. So okay. I had to so do it so tell control. me something. You were showing confidence, yes. right? But not necessarily confident, especially not. when you went into new spaces. How about when you were then in this shell boxed as a clown? How was that confidence factor there? No, there was. It was. I had the confidence to do anything that is funny. So you were yourself. I was essentially. I was a clown in that identity. I mm. was portraying. I was that, mm. and I was mm. good at it. Okay. But the confidence itself the was. The confidence is affected yeah. because here's the thing, my brother. How you connect confidence is is it is what you are showing in line with your identity. Yeah. It was not in line with my identity. Okay. What is identity? I always... That's a good question. Yeah. Because I did, there's many things to identity. What I failed to understand in that time is that me trying to run away from being a pastor's kid was me trying to run away from my identity. Mm. Me being born a pastor's kid doesn't change the fact that, that you are a pastor's pastor kid, kid. Yeah. even if I, I hate it yeah that is who i am yeah you understand yeah what i had to do or what i could have done differently yeah is embrace it mm. when i embrace it i kill all the pressure that it comes with mm. because mm. when people come and address me hey pastor's kid i'm proud of it yeah but i still know it doesn't take away from my ability to be a normal human being mm. and pursue what i want to pursue in life mm. The advantage is that my dad did not force this thing on me. Yeah, yeah. As much as he's my biggest influence in life, mm. he was very strategic with how he 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 helped me shape my identity. Mm. So from a very young age, I knew that I had something profound in my mind mm. that I can share with people. Mm. With my friends, I'm the one coming with solutions. I'm the one. I'm the leader of the yeah, group. Yeah. When I had older friends than me. Yeah. But I'm always the one leading. Mm. And that's because I was always with my dad. He would take me whenever he's solving church issues, leadership issues, he would go with me. Mm. And he would say, say, say something, young man. Mm. What do you say to this issue? And I'm still very young. I don't mm. even understand mm. a thing. Mm. I say something funny. People laugh. He takes that funny thing. He makes something useful out of it. That way he was building an identity to say, wow, I'm actually quite profound. Mm. So I'm growing with this profound thing. But outside, mm. Mm. I'm being a clown. Mm. So I was trying to run away from this identity, knowing that one day in my life, I would want to be a person who inspires people. How? I don't want to be a pastor, of course, mm. Mm. but I want to inspire oh, people. Also, you somehow. don't, even now, it's... It's, it's, it's never it's, a thing I've wanted. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. never a thing I've wanted. Okay. And unfortunately, I cannot run away from it. Yeah. I won't run away from yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So 
I've embraced that. So that's okay. the difference between then and now. Yeah. I've embraced that as a pastor's kid, the only son, and and not because I'm my father's son. Yeah. The pastor thing will come to me. Yeah. I have the virtues that would qualify me to lead people in that manner. If it was my choice, mm. if it was my choice, I would rather maybe choose to be in the management of my church instead mm. of being in the forefront. Mm. But I have the virtues and the qualities that would kind of like qualify me to be in the forefront. Okay. So I can't run away from that. And that is not my call to make. Okay. So tell me about the transition. So now you, you, you embraced everything and you, you feel like you are living in line with that identity, in line with your character, in line with the virtues that you have. Now tell me, when did that transition happen from clowning to being a serious member of society? <laughs> Um, funny enough, my people, the people that I used to go to high school with, mm. they still find it difficult to adjust to the person that I am now yeah. because of the identity I was there. Yeah. So, and I say in the book that the game of my life changed. <laughs> <laughs> the game of my life changed when I started taking myself seriously. Yeah. So I started taking myself seriously in trying to shape where do I want to end up in my life? Having a vision for my life. Mm. Where am I going? And that's where it dawned upon me that, you know what, bro, you're running away from something that is you. You can't run away from yourself forever. Mm. And that's what the author comes in. I'm the, I want to be an author. Mm. It's always been my dream. And that's when, when the miracle perspective in its, in its name mm. came from this idea to say, and that's when I started my YouTube channel. It came from this idea that Every time I get into situations, whether it's a problem, whether it's a conflict, I bring a different perspective to that issue. Mm. I'm not a person to be easily offended. I'm not a person to be easily affected by situations, things that are happening, because I always apply a unique perspective to make myself feel good. Mm. I, I call it be on your side. Mm. I'm always on my side. Mm. What is my side? I would want to be happy. I would want to be at peace. I would want to feel like I'm in control. Mm. That's being on my side. So how about I turn every situation such that I still feel like I'm in control, mm. I'm, on, I'm happy, and I'm at peace. Mm. So when I came up with the Miracle Perspective, the idea was... So the YouTube channel name is the Miracle Perspective. Yes. Nice. So when I came up with that name, it was because I was in the phase of mapping up the vision of my life. Mm. Where do I want to go? And I was like, I would want to be an advisor of precedence in the world where there are certain issues like now for example with the russia ukraine situation mm. where it's it's everybody's at loggerheads there's no solution like you know what we need the miracle perspective in this situation mm. Mm. then they call me mm. and i come and give the miracle perspective. Mm. Mm. so mm. that is the dream i had mm. that made me accept the miracle perspective as a name as a brand mm. started my youtube channel mm. and from then i started talking about motivational stuff and mm. it came easy without even doing anything yeah so the transition happened when i started taking myself seriously mm. and i started mapping out a vision for my life where do i want to go and that's where the book came in as well so can you pinpoint that exact aha moment, moment. yeah um, yeah yeah not oh really. it just happened as a transition yeah it just happened as okay. a transition because when i finished uh university well, I didn't finish university, but when I finished my started my YouTube channel, it was in 2018. Mm. So at that oh yeah, it's network marketing basically that helped me. Okay. That gave me the transition. Okay. I was part of this network marketing company. Mm. And in network marketing company, the beautiful thing about network marketing companies is that they pursue personal development like crazy. Mm. So if you want to understand yourself better and develop as a person, join a network marketing company. Mm. Because you need to convince people to get into your, your network. Mm. You need to sell your products. You need to do all of that. The biggest thing to sales is being a person that is sellable. Mm. If you can sell yourself, you can sell almost anything. Mm. Mm. That, that's when the shift happened. And I started being a trainer in that company. Mm. Started being a presenter in that company. I started being an MC actually mm. in that company. You MC'd my wedding last year. Yeah. 
<laughs> so I'm just pretending not to know you for the sake of the starters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but so, I know you very well. So it started with the network marketing company. I didn't know myself as an MC. Yeah. And I didn't think it was going to be a thing, a profession like yeah. it is now. Yeah. Mainly because from the church background, it's normal. You know, when you normalize something, yeah, you yeah. end up losing the value yeah. of, of it. Yeah. So it was just a normal thing. I was like, ne I'd never... I don't remember growing up and being an MC at church. Mm. I don't remember that. Even at church, even now, mm. to this day, mm. congregations that have been at church since I was born mm. st are still trying to understand that I'm an MC mm. and a powerful one for that. Mm. Mm. It's a shock. No, I can attest to that. <laughs> when you say a powerful one, I can definitely attest to that. Yeah, but And it brings me into the next part of honing your craft mm. and building your character. You are a Toastmaster champion. People better recognize you, bro. Very important. It's very important. very important. Yes. You are a Toastmaster champion. So you going into that lane of actually I want to be this type of professional within the thing that I'm doing. Mm. What inspired that? And just maybe share more in terms of the value of honing yeah. one's craft. <clears throat> so I explained that my life changed when I started taking myself seriously. Yes. That came with me crafting a vision for my life, where I want to be. Yeah. And that came with, <clears throat> if I'm going to be a person that is going to be trusted by presidents all over the world, yeah. I must have some, some sort of value mm. that I'm bringing to the table. Mm. Mm. And it's not just any value. Mm. It must be extraordinary value that cannot be found anywhere. Wow. That will demand me to build myself. Mm. That will demand me to know certain things that people don't know. That will demand me to have a mental stamina that people don't have. Mm. I am I can't be average mm. because it's not an average job that I want to do. Yeah. yeah. So it starts there. Mm. What do you want for your life? Mm. Who are you supposed to become to become that? Mm. In order for you to qualify to do what you want or mm. to get what you want. Mm. So it's the question I ask myself. If I want to do such a big role, I want to inspire people all over the world. I want to do this. What will it take from me? Mm. I don't have it now. Let me become it. Mm. And that's when I started pursuing books, watching a lot of YouTube interviews. Mm. <clears throat> to this day, even when I'm in my car, yeah, I don't play music. You just like me, bro. <laughs> yeah, you just like me. Same thing. Yeah. Same thing. Radio always off, bro. It's always off. Yeah. I hardly. If it's only when I have a song ringing in my mind. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Let me just play this song. Yeah. It's specific. And put it on a WhatsApp status. Yeah, you, you see. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's it's my when I play music. It's when there's a specific purpose for that. Yeah. But under normal circumstances, I get into my car. It's absolute silence. Mm. I'm quiet, mm. thinking. And in that thinking, I'm never an enemy to myself. Mm. I'm always on my side. Mm. And that's one thing I've realized. People are enemies of themselves mm. most times. That's mm. why they can't stay in such an asylum. Mm. They mm. always have to mm. be around people. Mm. They always have to be playing something. They always have to have distractions to keep them busy because Aish. they are enemies of themselves. Aish. They are their own villains in their Aish. own lives. Yeah. So they can't deal with themselves. They must always be distractions. And I'm not that. Mm. And it doesn't, it didn't come easy. I was not always like that. I I, I learned to become a friend of mine mm. on my side. Mm. And that comes with the role I want to play later in life. Mm. So for anyone who wants to become something better in life, mm. they must ask themselves, what do I want to become? Or what do I want to do in my life? Have so that's vision. the starting that's point. The starter. Yeah. Have a vision for your life. All right. That's the vision I want to attain yeah do i have what it takes to get there mm. clearly not you would be there if you had yeah <laughs> <laughs> so start doing something that will make you the person who qualifies to have those things yeah and then start exposing yourself to things that will lead you in that direction so it's interesting i'm about to have a lecture now and yeah in the lecture <clears throat> we're going to be talking about the vision and mission the importance of that in your life yeah where the vision is the bigger picture of mm. what you want to achieve. Mm. The mission is the smaller goals you attain as you approach the vision. Mm. 
So, so it's an accumulation, accumulation process. It's okay. accumulative. Exactly. Yeah. So it's something that you can break down and plan. A vision is not. If you don't look at your vision every day, you can't do that. It's yeah. Good. You yeah. Keep you motivated. It's yeah. a motivator. I'm going there. I'm going there. Yeah. Yeah. But what do you need to do now? Action. That's where you do action steps. Mm. My mission today is to talk to Brother Les. Yeah. My mission today is to go and inspire the UJ students. Yeah. That's my mission. Yeah. It's pushing me, propelling me towards becoming that person mm. that can attain that goal mm. or the vision that I have. Mm. So mm. the first step, find that vision. Mm. Then look at, are you cap- do you have what it takes to attain that? Yeah. No. What do I need to do? Start reading books. Yeah. Start watching videos that are yeah. going to take you closer to your vision. Yeah. And start being around places that will take you closer to the, to the vision. I was part of a network marketing company that was taking me closer to the vision. Are you a network marketing? There's a chapter in this book. <laughs> yeah, I, I, won't I won't get into it. I won't get into it. I'm with a lot of... Yeah, I won't get down. into it. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know all about it, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but it's all of that. And yeah. There's the bad side of the stuff I was doing. Yes. But it was making me into becoming the person that I am. Yeah. Leading me towards that. Yeah. There's so much good in ending up in the bad situations. There's so much good. Yeah. Because first of all, it tests whether you are what you think you are. Do we need to get tested though around that particular viewpoint? You have to be tested. You can't be trusted if you can't be tested. Ah, powerful. You have to be tested. Powerful. So that your ability to overcome the test mm. will make you a hero in your own life. Mm. And when you become a hero in your own life, you become admirable to other people who are watching you. Mm. And they can try to model your life. Mm. Mm. And mm. that is a good thing. Mm. We don't live for ourselves. We live for many other people around us. Yeah. We are, we are not living in, a, in an island where it's just you and you yourself only. Mm. You have to live. That's why I say life is long. And people don't understand. Life is too short. Life is too short. Yeah, yeah, you. yeah, yeah. Life is so long, such that whatever you do today has, has an impact on somebody else. This video, mm. it's gonna stay on YouTube. Mm. Even when I'm dead, mm. it will still live. Yeah, it will outlive me. Yeah, that's how long life is. Yeah, it's very important how you live mm. your life because it's super long. Don't be finite in your thinking. Don't be finite in your mm. thinking. There's not. Mm. There's, that's, that's the thing about destination. Mm. You never get there. Mm. You never get to mm. the destination. Mm. You, when you get there, it, something else unfolds. That's then the, the next company. milestone. It's like what just happened, Kabo Mekji. Exactly. Who are celebrating 1 million subscribers and they're already talking. I'm thinking about 10 million. You that's your point. Yeah, to exactly. your point. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. life. It's yeah. life. When, when you think of destination, you die. Mm. That's why... <laughs> I say retirement. Well, it is the idea. final. It is the yeah, final it's destination. The final destination yeah, the day. yeah. That's why yeah. I say retirement is a bad idea. It's a bad idea. It's a very bad idea. Tell my sixty-year-old mother. Because <laughs> I've been pushing her to retire. I'd rather she retires, focuses on her spiritual journey and yeah. knocking on doors and bringing people in rather than the stress that she currently endures in the workplace. Yeah, it's it's a bad idea, my brother. Ah, extra, elaborate, elaborate. Because it assumes, first of all, that you've arrived, you've done your role, you've had your part, and you've played it. No, you. but it's it's in a segment of your life, Good. right? If so you, you are retiring from in a... This yes, from thing, this particular that's thing. something else. Yes. That's good. And it was a vision for you to push that for 40 years, for example, good. right? Good. Then now you are transitioning 100%. into something then else. It's not a you are just moving. Yeah. It's not retirement. Retirement is, you know what? It's time for me to gain all my malis and I will go to Mali. I'll go to Mauritius. I'll just spend my money. But we all know life. that's temporary. It's temporary. Yeah, miracle. But if you are going to be looking at that as the end goal. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I get idea. you. If you don't have anything exactly. further than that. that. Because you assume that nobody else around you needs your service. Mm. Mm. And that's not the life that God has created. Mm, mm. We are here to serve each other. Mm, mm, so when mm. you say, you know what, I've done my service, it's time to shut down. I'm done working. Mm. Nobody's getting help from me. Mm. It's a selfish approach. Mm. And you don't live long after that. And it, it's statistically... Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, don't they, you, you do have a time. point. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's because the nature of people 
is such that we must always be serving one another. Mm. And working is another way of serving one another. Mm. Mm. Retiring from, I have been an HR in this in this organization mm. for so long. Yeah. Two, I'm going to start my own business mm. because we have gained so much skills. I can start my own business mm. to serve people like this, mm. 100%. That's mm. our retirement. Mm. No, I, I get you. Speaking of overcoming, I actually wanted to know what's your biggest challenge ever that you can think about and then share maybe how you were able to overcome that hmm. in your life whilst I page through the five Rand universities. <laughs> biggest challenge I've had. Yo, there's been many challenges I've been exposed to in my life. Mm, mm many challenges last year i was hijacked and, oh, I just you told me my, that story. My, my anniversary of my hijacking just two days ago serious yeah it was the I, I hope i don't bring no, serious I'm trauma dead, i remember man. when you told me about it you were over it already i was and that was like what was like three, three months, months into it yeah. yeah 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 i was that even from the second day yeah after that yeah i've never had any of I, I, I wasn't affected by that to be quite honest Okay. It was not affected. It was. It didn't affect me, and I even temporarily, not even. It was those kind of things where I'm like, "Oof, that was scared. How did that happen? Jeez!" And I can. I almost like, died. Oh, yeah. I remember. Can, Hella, your story is hectic, bro. I can sort of like. You actually have to share it on your channel. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. I can like. I'm or playing how did that happen? It happened so quick. Mm, mm. We're friends with these people, talking nicely, bonding. Next thing get back of the car yeah. like things happen so yeah. fast so yeah. it's, it's it was just those mini snippets in mm. my head what did that what happened there but it didn't affect me mm. didn't sit in my room crying myself to sleep every night and oh i almost died no mm. No. Mm. and not because i'm a hero mm. i understood from that incident mm. you I were being tested <laughs> and i understood very well why yeah. people get trauma get traumatized by such events mm, mm. i understood very well how it could have traumatized me mm. and but didn't i stopped judging people who end up in situations where they can't move forward because of situations mm. or things that happen mm. that are tragic to that degree mm. and why did i stop judging people while i did not get traumatized it's because i understood that i'm not i'm not not traumatized because of my own smartness or what mm. first of all i've been a, a, an advocate of mental strength i wrote it in my book i've been an advocate of uh, emotional control mm. manage your emotions mm. i had to be tested in that manner mm. Are so you that you, you, say you are? <laughs> when you talk about resilient are you resilient and yeah lucky enough it got me in a position where indeed I was resilient. Mm. Because now, as that was happening, funny enough, I was not even thinking, yo, I'm going to die. Yo, this, no. Mm, mm. I was thinking, geez, what is God trying to tell me in this moment? And I'm there in the situation. Things are happening too fast. Mm. And I'm just calm. And you're in the back seat. I'm in the back seat. Just on can't the, even see where on the, the car is headed. Bro. Sitting, I can't even see. The guy's legs are over me like this. They're busy. It's, it's taking my phone, getting mm. into my accounts, wiping me out mm, mm, completely. Mm, mm. At that instant, I'm like, all right, I don't have a car anymore. Uh, I don't have money. Mm. I need to go and sell my books like crazy so I can recover. It's month end now. Mm. What am I going to do? In that instant, mm. I'm already thinking, what am I going to do? Jeez, these guys have killed mm, me. Mm. Yo, where am I going to start? Mm. So I'm already thinking ahead to say, okay, it's happening. Uh, the car is gone. Mm. Eh? Remove the trackers. I'm not getting this anymore. I've no, I know incidents like this, they happen and people don't get it, but it's fine. At least we are having a proper conversations with this guy mm. where we came, we were bonding. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just relying on their hum humanity, on yeah, their humanity yeah. to say, let's not kill this guy, let's leave yeah, him like that. Yeah. So I'm hoping for that. But after that, what's going to happen to me? Yeah. So I'm already thinking ahead. Mm. And I'm like, what is God trying to tell me? And the, the, the message I got was that you are delaying yourself. You are in the wrong place. There are people who should be benefiting from the Five Friend University, which is my book. Mm, there are people mm, who should be benefiting mm. from you as a speaker. Mm. And you are out here 
doing the easy stuff mm. because it was easy for me to do mm. that. Mm. It was a comfort level for me to do that. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? After this, I have to go and work. Mm. So that was what, what 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 was happening at that instant. And that's why it didn't traumatize me because I looked into me. I'm a, I'm a big advocate of responsibility. Mm. I took responsibility of the situation. If I was busy pursuing my calling, mm. I wasn't going to be in this place. Mm. If I was, if I didn't decide to go out at this time, this wouldn't have happened. Mm. But it's fine. What am I supposed to take out of this situation? Because it's not what happens, it's mm. what you do about it. Aish, yeah. And I always used to say that. Mm. Throughout this book, I'm saying that. Mm. I had to apply that. The situation came where I needed to apply mm. that. Mm. So I think how I overcame that was me applying the things I've been saying. Mm. To not be traumatized and to not be stuck in mm. one place. Mm. and to not be going around with paranoia mm. i am very alert now mm. always looking at my over my shoulder mm. Mm. but i'm not traumatized so those are lessons learned those are lessons learned. okay yeah okay we have five minutes before you're gonna deliver your killer killer lecture to the uj students and being on a campus right now drives me to a topic that i love very much and it's around academics and the role that academics plays in society and how sometimes it's shunned upon particularly by us entrepreneurs and everything so what's your take because even in terms of your profile you have author mc you know mm -hmm. businessman all those things then only in the second paragraph you mention that you are an honors graduate in environmental science yeah so <clears throat> Tell me then the value of academics, what it does for you, how has it helped you, and what do you think about the future of academics in this country and broadly speaking? Without academics, we wouldn't have all the civilization that we have right now, currently. Mm. Without academics, we wouldn't have the developments that keep happening. Mm. Uh, without education in particular, we wouldn't have even this that's happening right now. Mm. So it's vastly important. Mm. Academics are very important. My ability to, to communicate with you now is through academics. Mm. The ability to just think, critically think, mm. and that is the skill I got with sciences. Mm. The ability to articulate yourself clearly. Mm. Which you do very well, my brother. Thank you, sir. <laughs> the, which came with me learning English, vocabulary. Yeah. I wouldn't have learned it at home. Mm. Your ability to just write, I'm an author today. Mm. I learned that from school. Mm. So, it is from school. Well, the fact that we are doing it wrong, it's not the fault of the academic. Mm. The so, you feel it's currently being it's done wrong? It's currently being practiced wrong. The motivations are wrong around it. To a certain degree, how so? Mm. For example, how many of us, people like myself, we studied all the way to the end, only to change careers after yeah. into something different. Yeah. Who is wrong? Academics? No. Mm. Maybe I didn't get enough guidance before going into it. If I had enough guidance to mm. find who I am mm. earlier on, that yeah, the, the identity of element, exactly. yeah. And that is not the responsibility of school. Mm. That is the responsibility of the family, the household. Where are the parents, the father and the mother, to work together in building this human being that is their child mm. and helping them, guide them through into getting that kind of a, mm. a, a, a education that is going to be beneficial to who they are becoming. Mm. Mm. In my sense, in my, in, my, in my situation, I was confused the whole of my life. I was leaving many identities. I didn't know where I was going. Mm. When it was suggested that, hey, do environmental sciences, I was like, sounds fancy. I've never heard of that before. I'm <laughs> do it. So I did it because of yeah. the fact that it sounded fancy. Mm. Was it who I was? Was it what I wanted? I didn't even know what it was mm. to start with. Mm. Only when I was in it, I realized, huh, this is what it is. Mm. Interesting. Mm. But I'm more of this person. Mm. Where the magic happens is utilizing that which I learned to, to pivot aid me and pivot mm. in mm. what I'm doing. Mm. And it's exactly what I'm doing. Mm. So there's, there's still value even in that mistake Big or time. in that error. Big there's time. still value Big in time. it. That's the, the, the thing about academics. It doesn't give you identity. Mm. School doesn't give you identity. It's a pity when someone feels like I'm a doctor in, in uh, as a, I'm a doctor of 
philosophy mm. or I'm a, I'm a doctor of this and that is who I am. Yeah. It's a pity. Yeah. It's not. So it's a limiting mindset. It's a limiting mindset. And academics are there to give you things that you can use to mm. shape your identity mm. around. Mm. So what I would say is that expose your kids or expose anybody who's pursuing academics to many opportunities around their character mm. so they can find their ways to pivot around academics. There are people who don't need school at all. Mm. They just need those hands-on kind of short courses mm. Mm. where they practice their craft. They don't need school. Why mm. are you taking them to school? Mm. Mm. It's not the problem of school mm. that it accepted you mm. who was confused. Mm. It's you who went there when you were confused. Mm. So help them find who they are and what works for them and take them there. Mm. But also, depending on who you are, your identity and your background plays a role. There are many people who do not have the opportunity to be pivoting, looking for what works for them mm. because situation does not and background does not allow. That's why it is their prerogative to look at themselves and mm. say, I can hear this message, sounds good, but not for me. Mm. And that's where you come in as a, as a learner, mm. be a student, not a follower. Mm. So you're like, he's speaking sense. But it's not for me. I don't mm. have that that opportunity to be moving around trying to find what I love. Mm. I, I must work and bring money home to build my family, to help my brothers and sisters. There is there are those situations that we cannot run away from. And academics is good because it will give you that employment that will help you to go back. Mm. Perhaps your life may start even later, mm. but it's a gift on its own. Mm. You, know, you shouldn't be looking down on it. It's a, it's a foundation. It's a foundation. Yeah. The fact that you got an opportunity to even be at a position where you can start changing someone else's life and your own life, yeah. it's a blessing on its own. No, 100%. So shouldn't be going around, I hate my job, I hate this. That job is a blessing. Mm. The fact that it gives you money and it gives you food and it gives you clothing, it gives you a sense of decency. It's a blessing. Let me, let me tell you what people should go around saying. Mm. People should go around saying, buy the five rand university. Because what we've just spoken about now is a snippet. It's a 100%. snippet of the value that you offer. And knowing that people don't really read books, yes. including myself. Yes, now let's get into that quickly. I don't quickly. read books as well. Yeah. So, I've, the author doesn't read books. I don't read books, to be quite honest. I listen to books. Okay. So, understanding that about me and the value that is in this book, mm. people were asking me, when I write the second book, I'm like, no, I can't write the second book. As much as I already have the topic of two books in my mind, mm. I have mm. order. Mm. How to manage your life so that you are productive and you improve your performance. That is the next book coming. Mm. But I'm like, no, I'm not going to write the next book. I have not done enough justice to this book. Because it is so powerful, it changed my life. Mm. I made it easy for people. Mm. I recorded the audiobook. Yourself? Myself. Profile your voice over artist. Okay. <laughs> I recorded this because I don't want people to have excuse that I don't have time. People don't have time. Yeah. We're living in a fast time, yeah. right? fast age. Things are quick. Yeah. It's easier to get into my car, play something while I'm driving. I will be reading the book for you. Mm. So there's the audiobook version coming for the book. When is it coming, my brother? On the 30th of September, I'm going to be having a massive launch, a mega launch. Wait, Victoria, give us details, in bro. Victoria at Manhattan Hotel. Yeah. Uh, registration is half past 10. The event is starting at 11 o'clock. Mm. The beautiful thing about that launch is that it's a triple-decker launch. Okay, let's hear it. I'm only launching this book, what, two years later, three mm. years later. Mm. Mm. Why did I not launch it before? Mm. Because for me, just... I, I wrote a book, guys, come see me. I wrote a book. Didn't make sense. Mm. Not that it's bad or anything, but mm. for me. Mm. Now it made sense for me to launch the book. Why? Because I'm not only bringing the book that people are not going to read. Mm. I'm bringing the audio book, mm. which stands a higher chance of people listening and mm. giving the value mm. that is in the book. Mm. Not only that, I'm, I'm launching the course for the book. Okay. So there's going to be a course program breaking down each and every chapter. Okay. As, I read, as you read the book, mm. it's... It's chapters, chapters, but most of it, it's chapters that will still leave you with the, how do I apply this? So I practical. wrote down the practical application of each and every chapter, mm. broken down into segments. So basically, every chapter is going to be a module, broken down into chapters. Module two, broken down into chapters. And that is a video course that is going to be launched on the day. 
So, and as we are about to be late, we are about to give away two copies awesome. to awesome. two deserving environmental health students awesome. at the University of Johannesburg. You want to choose who receives it at the end of your lecture wow. based on participation, engagement and everything else. Awesome. So Can't thank wait. you very much thank for so making much, the brother. time. And I'm looking forward to the lecture you're about to give, brother. Thank you so much. Much appreciated. Uh, cheers. Subscribe to the channel. If you cheers. Subscribe. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Awe. Awe.